I'm assuming it's okay for that to stick out that far. Not sure. Hello, Jody from Bird Dog Off Road Adventures here. Today we're going to review a new drivetrain upgrade that we've just got. I'm uh, going to add this in very shortly to the Bronco, so stay tuned. All right, so the upgrade that we're talking about is RCV axles. I know if y'all follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen me already display these. Uh, they come in a set. A little heavy, uh, not going to lie. But uh, take this off real quick, just so you guys can see a little better. But yeah, these are made uh, out of Rockford, Illinois, up the street here from us. RCV Performance. So... Pretty sturdy, pretty beefy looking. Uh, of course, these haven't been put in yet, but you know, uh, these have a good reputation in the industry for having very strong CV axles. The website says there's a lifetime warranty on tires up to 40 inches, which, as some of you all know, we recently upgraded 38 inch uh, Nitto Ridge Grapplers, which are more of a hybrid tire. They're C rated too, so they're not as heavy, but still. It's a little bit of added weight to the drivetrain, just so you know. So it will add the stress. And instead of taking the risk of breaking one of the M factory M210 axles that comes in the Sasquatch and the Badlands models, like ours is, uh, we decided to go ahead and be proactive and upgrade this. Now, we will keep the M210 axles as backups, especially next year, because we have trips planned to go out to Moab, and we also have trips planned to go out to uh, Rubicon Trail, possibly late next year. So 2024. So more to come on that later down the road. Right now we're just in talks. We're not having a date set or anything. We might try to do it in conjunction with the uh, Nevada Supercell, assuming they have it the second event next year, depending on when that is. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So, I mean, these look pretty top notch. Uh, you know, I heard uh, the initial ones they offered did have some issues. If you read on the forums about clicking and stuff they did hold off on producing more of them and then they took back and redid them and re-released them uh so hopefully that won't be an issue but you know if if it is we'll let you know uh one of the other common complaints that we would heard is that the boots coming off and grease slinging around so hopefully that won't be an issue i mean i can't force them off with my hands but obviously i don't have the strength that these things are going to face when they're uh, torquing pretty heavy on the road so with our coil over suspension lift being three inches above sasquatch we're probably pretty safe. Uh, our steering components are also uh, beefed up. As most of you all probably know that follow me uh, for a long time, we had the Bronc Buster bushing. We had the Bronc Buster aluminum housing in on the passenger side. And we have the Icon tie rods. Now, those have been on there for, I want to think, probably 10 to 15,000 miles because we got them on right before we went to Tennessee, which was back in April, and it's mid-August now. So uh, probably about 15,000 miles about four months ago. So, and they've been to Tennessee, they've been to Ure, they've been uh, off-roading at the sand dunes over at Silver Lake all since then. So, we've had plenty of time to test those things out. So, I think they'll do pretty good. But, hey guys, something else we're going to do this week, uh, along with the axles, is this new Bronc Buster aluminum housing. So, this will be a bit of an insurance part. You can see how bulky this thing is. Look how big this is compared to me. So, I'm a big guy. So, this is definitely a hefty piece. So... Can't wait to get this on as well. Give us a little more comfort, a little more insurance to know that we're not going to break anything on the trails. Um, it does come with everything you need for the install. It comes with this little group in here. I'm assuming this is part of the bearing. And also this piece right here from Ford Motor Company. It's a direct Ford part. I'm assuming this is also uh, part of the bearing system. All right, so here's up close. So it's kind of, it's definitely good and thick. Now this piece right here looks like it does come off. I don't know why you'd want to take it off. It's just part of the machine process, I'm assuming. Of course, big man's name on here. So, like I said, there's the pieces that it comes with. Here, so you can see as well. All right, so I'll give you guys a quick update on what happened during this install. Unfortunately for us, when the initial install took place, the shop that we used for the install pushed the outer bearing in too far with the Bronc Buster tube. The inner bearing's already pressed in. Uh, the way it's explained to me is that the stock tube, the inner and outer bearing are already in with the inner bearing being pushed in from the inside. 
and and I could be wrong, so please correct me, Brockbuster, if you're watching this. Uh, or and with the Brockbuster tube, the inner bearing is already pressed in, but they send the other bearing, which you saw in the earlier video footage, which is a circle bearing, and you have to push it in on the outside. Well, as you look in the tube, we're going to show you right here. There is a little tiny groove on the very end of the tube, about you know about an inch in, I guess, maybe a little less. Uh, you know, you can see it's a little groove there that's where that bearing is supposed to sit flush up against with the bearings sitting flush up against the outer edge of the differential tube so with it being pressed in too far it basically constricted that bearing made it smaller so that's why we were having trouble getting the axle to go all the way in uh, and whenever it did go in anytime there was any kind of when you drove it uh, it popped, pushed it back out. So that's where we got the axle sticking out real far uh, from the first install. Cause we took it back to the shop a second time after we noticed it and they pushed it back in. And before I even got home, it pushed back out again. So we reached out to, you know, RCI, we reached out to Bronkbuster. Of course, Tyler was busy in the Rubicon uh, with Wild Horses 4x4, so he had me reach out to Austin at Bracken Machine. I uh, can't say enough positive things about Austin. He was really helpful. He worked directly with the second shop I went to uh, to uh, get it resolved. So after some brainstorming, brainstorming with the second shop and the second shop, sent them pictures of the actual bearing and how far it was in. They immediately identified what was wrong with it. And long story short, they took the bearing back out fixed it up nice, set the RCV axles back in, and that's been about three or four days ago as of this filming, and so far it's worked great. I check it every day just to make sure it hasn't moved out any because you know, I'm OCD like that and I wanna make sure, especially before I take it off-road. So the plan is, is probably go off-road next weekend, uh, maybe at Badlands, but we'll see, uh, to try to kind of test it out just to make sure everything's all copacetic. But I just wanna kinda of give you guys a lowdown on what happened during the install. So if you do buy this diff tube, which I would recommend it's a good product to get, is it absolutely necessary? Probably not for most people. Uh, but with me, I didn't mind spending extra money to have a little extra peace of mind. Um, you know, so that's just my preference. I know I don't think like everybody else and I wouldn't suggest everybody else do exactly what I do. But you know, if you do wanna get that product, just make sure that whenever you have it installed, that that shop knows the it only goes into that point. I don't think it should be an issue. I think most shops should know that. Um, most mechanics should know that, but just to be on the safe side to have you guys avoid what I went through with that. So it was a little bit of a scare, but you know, long story short, we got everything back up and running. Everything's good to go. Uh, you know, this is about as good as my front end is gonna get and for a while. Uh, you know, I did choose this combination of the RCV and the Brockbuster diff tube over the Dana 44, Ultimate 44 FDU. That may come down the road, uh, but you know, with the Dana 44 FDU and the axle, the 32 spline axles that are required to go with it, you're looking at about almost $7,000 in expenses. So, you know, for me, I was just like, you know what? We got other things coming down the road in my personal life that I want to save my money for. So we just chose not to go that route. We decided to go with the RCVs and the diff tube for now. And, you know, maybe a few years down the road, we'll uh, end up upgrading to that FDU the day from Dana. I'm hoping RCV comes out with uh, axle replacements for the stock factory axles in the rear. Uh, I know they do them for Jeep. So it'd be nice to have that option as well. And that way we don't have to try to maybe offset going all the way up to semi-float Dana 60. Because I'm not here doing this heavy duty over the top stuff. But I do like to push myself a little bit. So anyway, hope you guys like this video. Please hit that like and subscribe button. We got more stuff to come. We got a couple events coming up. We're going to Overland the Red here next month. If you haven't heard of that, it's a uh, event that's also facilitated by Northology uh adventures which is also the people who facilitate the core event which you go to every year this year we didn't go to core because we like can only do one or two so we decided to do overland the red help support cindy and her team at uh, northology uh so it's to be the Dan daniel boone backcountry byway which we've not been to before so that'll be very exciting so i can't wait to uh you know hit some of those trails hopefully run into our friend trail hunter usa while we're down there but anyway see you guys around take it easy